Hey everyone, today we'll be going over creating a fusion effect with a 2D image and the user's face. So if we check the screen here, it's cycling through some images of basketball players I had imported. And once you tap the screen, it chooses one, it fades out, and then it fuses both the user and the player. <laughs> this is perfect. All right, let's get started. Okay, so right now we're in a fresh project. And the first thing we're going to do is import the texture sequence. That is the images that's going to be on top of the user's head. All right. Uh, we're going to use a 14 of these players. I've been recycling for a couple projects now. And um, once it's imported, you'll see under textures and under animated animated textures as well. So let's just rename the, um, I guess rename the texture sequence to players because this is going to be used a lot. All right, so the first thing we want to do, if we're going to add an image on top of the user's head, it will sort of move with them. And to get that kind of movement, we would need a head tracker. So let's go over to AR tracking and head tracking. So with head tracking on, this allows, this is basically telling Effect House, okay, track the user's head. And why we have to turn it on is if it was always on, it would be taking a lot of the processing power without needing to. So if you're doing like a simple effect that doesn't use head tracking and it was on, then it would just keep using it even though it didn't need to. So we always need to enable that if we're gonna use some sort of head tracking. Okay, so next we're gonna add the image. So we're gonna go to 3D and then image. And that adds a 3D image in the dead space. So if you can see, it's not tracking with the user's head as yet. We have to make it a child under head tracker. And now when the user moves, let's see if we can um, use a different one. Just so you can have an idea. Nope, that's just idle, nodding. And it moves alongside with them. So let's bring it up a bit and perfect. So we can go on ahead and delete head and then just rename this to you know, selection, if I can spell selection, and then go over to textures and change the texture to players, which is the animated texture we just imported and already looking cool. So from this point on, what we want to do is when this, when we tap the screen, it stops, it selects a player. So the animation stops. So we're going to open the visual scripting window and we're going to delete start and add node mm -mm 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 -mm. screen tap. If I can spell today. So go from screen tap to animated texture player. Perfect. The names are very similar. Sometimes you have animated texture info are animated set animated textures. So it is a bit of a task remembering them, but you can always just go through the, so if you right click add node, you can just go through the library and you'll find a bunch of cool ones. All right. So screen tap animated texture player, and we are going to select players. And what we're doing here is we want, once we tap the screen, it stops. So let's try pauses. So when we select, when uh, we tap the screen and then the animated texture player pauses, just imagine what we're seeing on the screen right now, it's cycling through images, but what it's doing is the first image, let's call that image zero, is going zero, one, two, three, four, and say it's five images, it stops at four and it goes all the way back and starts at zero. So it's just cycling through the, the I guess the frame index that the number represents. So if it's the first image, first image, second image, third, and just goes and goes and starts all over. So when we pause this, it's saying, okay, stop at a particular frame, a number frame, and whatever image that um, number represents, show that on the screen. So if we get lucky, we tap the screen, pretend this was the third image, um, a value is being saved that, okay, we stopped on the third image. This is going to be important later on. So the next thing we want to do is as soon as we get a get a selection or get a player, 
we want to wait two seconds so he's on the screen for at least two seconds and then it just starts fading out so unplay end or unplay unpause since we're using pause uh wait wait two seconds let's pause this so it's not playing while we're trying to get this all set up and to fade it we can use transit by time and if you've watched uh any of my videos for a while you know this is one of my favorite uh favorite nodes because it's saying basically go from this value to that value in a certain amount of time and you can do so much so much with that from fading to changing colors really useful really cool but for this value we're for this um for this uh step we're just fading out the player image so fading we're going to use the opacity so if we just watch this play right now and you scroll down the opacity you can see it's getting more and more transparent until it's just invisible so if you realize it went from one to zero on the on the opacity which simulates it going invisible not just you know just invisible off rip so let's go from one to zero in one second and let's set opacity and when we get when we click this uh, circle icon here and set opacity, that means we the change we're making it um, we're changing it to the opacity of the image. If it was get, um, you can do more things with you can do a lot of things with this. But for this, I guess this step we're setting it. So you have transit by time. You go over to stay and you carry the current number to the value. So let's test it out. We click restart and we, let's see, let's get a good view of the graph so far. We tap the screen, the image shows for about three seconds, it fades out and that's it so far. So the next and final step is the fusion process. So for fusion, we need to add an object. I believe it is face effects, post effects, no. We can always just hit the search, handy dandy search bar, and face fusion. So, ooh, I believe it, it's automatically triggered. So we have a bit of work to do with the face fusion setup as it is. So we go down to face fusion in the asset panel and uncheck start fusion so it doesn't start automatically this is going to be very useful as we go on because as you've seen once the effect starts it will just start automatically trying to map the face and then planning it to this template face that this template image that comes with it so now we go back to playing the image and it's not going to try and start face fusion until we're ready so let's go through with this. We tap the screen, it stops on a player, fades out. Now would be a good time to start fusion. All right, so let's see, this is the fading out. This is the start. So the face fusion takes a while. So let's do it as soon as we're, as soon as the two seconds end and we're beginning to fade out the character. We are, oop, let's go here and let's get this set. So we can set it either on or off. So at the beginning, set this on. And let's see. So we have play, tap the screen, stops on a player. Ah, let's use a different uh, pose, but it's working. It's working, it's working, it's working, it's working. So let's tap the screen again. And it fades into it perfect. So the final step or second and final step is instead of this background image, we use an image from the from the player's animated texture that we have on the user's head. And to do that, just go over to source. And actually, before that, go over to Face Fusion and just change it here to Players. And also, well, I believe it'll 
automatically change there. So let's test it out. Cycles through, taps the screen. Okay, it stops, it fades. Perfect, perfect. So the final step is to add a bit of a background. So when you're creating the images, um, if you're okay with it being on the user's head, like a long vertical image, that's fine. But I liked having that square image over the user's head. But what happens is it won't completely fill the screen unless we're going to zoom it in. So what I intend on doing is adding a background image. So go over to 2D, a screen image, perfect already. And as you can see, having it below makes it on top of the um, face fusion and everything else. So let's put it below face fusion. And let's import an image. Let's see if I can get a nice background. I think I had one ready. Perfect. And set screen image to background. And let's rename that background. Perfect. So let's set the opacity to zero. And you'll see why afterwards, because what we're going to try and do is as soon as um, the face fusion is about to start, we're going to we are going to make it so that the back background kind of fades in alongside with it. All right, and the perfect time to do that is around this node right here. This is kind of our timestamp. So after two seconds and we're about to start fading out the uh, the selection on the user's head. We're also since face fusion's gonna start, but it takes around three seconds. Now would be the perfect time. And now would be the perfect time to kind of fade in the black background, set that from zero to one because we're setting the opacity from zero to one. So it's kind of fading in. And let's check. All right, cycles through, taps on the screen. Ah, I see it kind of fades in before it. And then, okay. So let's change that. I'm going to cut there, go from end to start. And let's see, because this is basically as after the, the uh, image on the user's head goes completely transparent, then you start setting the background visible. And I think that additional second is enough time where it just seamlessly comes in as the background for the fusion. Perfect, 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 perfect. Let's test it one more time. Did we get the same player? Possibly, but let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Great. So yeah, this is how you create a simple 2D randomizer fusion effect. Uh, you can do a lot with this. I can imagine you can add a lot more characters, maybe play around with the the backgrounds. Um, you have a lot of settings in the face fusion. Oh, wrong one. In the face fusion, all kinds of stuff, masks, uh, skin tone matching, fusion duration, we can change that. But yeah, this was pretty fun. Um, if you have any more uh, questions, uh, feel free to reach out on Instagram or Discord. Um, this specific tutorial was brought to me by the community. So if you want to see more videos on topics you're interested in, leave it as a comment or you can reach out on Instagram and I'll be sure to definitely check that out.